So now we're doing Christmas specials. The gang's all here. They have all rights, privileges, faxes, and every other thing to talk. They can say whatever they want. I don't care. Shaboo boo. Faxes? Is that a real word? F A X E S. Faxes, yeah. Okay. If you play with their friends, you would know that. Oh. All right. Number oh. 10. Now, I'm going to start off with the WTF moment. Now, I'm also going to say I had a huge time, horrible time, trying to find all animated stuff. So I just went with basic Christmas, Christmas episodes, Christmas specials, whatever. And number 10 is the most obscure one. But I thought it was the first thing that popped into my head. I want to throw it anyway. It's an episode of NCIS LA. It's a Christmas episode. Basically, the plot line was that everybody involved in NCIS had no clue what to give. Uh, Hetty is her nickname? Hetty. What, what to give Hetty for Christmas? Because she. She's very professional and very proper, and they, they, they all think, well, what can we give her for Christmas? But then she goes around, and she does the whole re-gifting thing. Like, she would give a present that was given to her from LL Cool J's character to Chris O'Donnell's character. So everybody got the same presents. And, you know, even though, yeah, they go out and shoot up the bad guys, they still have Christmas in their hearts, and that's and NCIS is their little family. So, there's my number 10. That's why it's, all, it's obscure. That's why I put it at the... Will you stop playing words with friends? Wait, he gets on me for playing... You just for not playing for words with friends. Hypocrisy. <laughs> just uh, when you think, you think uh, you know me, you have no clue. Anyway, so... You think you know me. Yeah, that's why it's number 10. That's why it's, it's at the bottom of the list. Number 9. Was, an ep was the Christmas episode of Father Knows Best. And basically... Sure? Yes, Father Knows Best. Basically, the Christmas episode was... Um, grandma, the grandma of the family, comes over to visit. And gets run over by a reindeer? No. <laughs> no. one! Grandma does not get run over by a reindeer. And of course, Grandma's tired from her long trip or whatever. And so... The father, who is also the good little son, decides to draw up a, a, a warm bath. So he goes into the bathroom, turns on. Next thing you know, a pipe breaks, and and so they they look in the in the in the the white pages or whatever the yellow pages or whatever the phone book is back then, and they find a guy named Mister Fixit, and they call him up and they say, you know, I'm, we're surprised you're open here. It's almost Christmas Eve. Can you come and fix this pipe? And they go, of course I'll come and fix the pipe. It's Christmas. Guy comes out, he fixes the pipe, and the youngest daughter, Kitten, Kitten, thank you, um, she's the, t she's like, I think she's afraid of grandma, or she doesn't really know her grandma very well, and she tries to help out, but of course grandma is the, the, the play portrayed as the mean old cranky grandma. And a potter of uh, Father Knows Best. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. And not Harry people for any freaking kids out there. And um, no man Potter. No Harry Potter. So the fix it guy, while he's fixing the pipes, he actually tells Kitten a Christmas story about angels. And ironically, the the angel is played by her older sister in the show. And of course, everything is hunky dory. They're all family again. The, the they offer to pay the fix the guy and he says no charge it's Christmas so a nice little happy warm little happy episode there number eight the Andy Griffith Andy Griffith Christmas special so that five times fast Andy Griffith Andy Griffith Andy Griffith I no, can't even Griffith do it Christmas, Andy Griffith, I, I Andy can't Andy do it I can't do it basically if I remember that episode correctly the thing that I love the most was uh, Andy brought out his guitar and played in the jail and the uh, there's this one mean old cranky cratchety type who ironically also he he was on uh, I Love Lucy he played the sheriff in the uh, Ernie Ford episode when in Tennessee he played oh, remember yeah, him yeah yeah. Ernie yeah. Ford yeah basically he the backstory was he's all alone for Christmas and nobody cares about him and he's just you know whatever and 
Andy has to, I believe, work on Christmas Eve, so he decorates the the jail all nice and whatever, and brings out his, brings out his guitar and sings and all that. And of course, uh, the cranky old guy gets himself arrested or whatever. And then he peeks in through the window and he sees everyone having a good time. And so he intentionally gets himself re-arrested so he can join in the holiday festivities. Which is... Why not just knock on the door and say, hey, can I join the party? Well, because he, well, he's cranky. He's always mean and cranky. So he, he's, he's too good for that. But in the end, he realizes what Christmas really is. And, you know, again, another warm, Aww. happy moment. little interesting trivia bit there. Go ahead. The guitar that Andy Griffith always would play on the Andy Griffith show and stuff, he gave to Brad Paisley after working with him on the set of Waiting on a Woman. Step Boy approved. That is absolutely wow, true. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yes. <clears throat> Number seven. An episode of Gilligan's Island that had to deal with Christmas. Her? Yeah. Was oh, there was a, there was I've seen every episode. There was that. a Christmas episode. Basically, <sighs> Christmas came around on the island. It was between the time when they met the Harlem Globetrotters and they got rescued. Pretty much. <laughs> and basically... Globetrotters were on there too? Yeah, the, the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. It was a made-for-TV movie. Oh, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta look that but, up. But uh, the story with Gilligan's Island was, you know, they're, they're still on the island, they've decorated, but they just can't get into the holiday spirit because they're marooned on this island. And, but uh, all these other people can manage to find their way to visit, but just can't offer just seven can't. stranded castaways a way off. Yeah, like the uh, makeshift Beatles that came on. They found themselves on, on the island. Talk about a continuity flaw. <laughs> <laughs> All these celebrities find their way out of the island, but can't offer Gilligan and his buddies a way off. Yeah, really. So, uh, they're all... I think they even do some flashbacks and they reminisce. And, ironically, Santa Claus comes out. Yeah. Poor Santa Claus can Santa get out of Santa Claus shows on the island. Seriously. <laughs> and jolly old Saint Nick can't find room in his sleigh to put each castaway on one of the reindeer's <laughs> back and jet them off the freaking island. <laughs> Come on, Saint Nick. Where's your holiday spirit? In the words, in the words of Riley, he is a bitch ass. Right? Whoa! Whoa. Kid. Kid. <laughs> Kid. You gotta go oh, super... Sorry. You gotta be G, not even PG. You gotta be super squeaky clean version. But, he, but Santa Claus shows up, and of course Santa Claus was portrayed by Alan Hale Jr. Skipper. But of course the, the, the castaways are there, and it's like, Well, Santa, you know, what have we got to be merry about? Well, you've got yourselves. Ho, ho, ho. And then of course Santa Claus leaves, and then here comes the Skipper, and it's like... Well, wait a minute, it wasn't... Oh, it was, it was Santa Claus. And then, you know, another happy, warm moment. Number six. Animated, finally, and that's how the Grinch stole Christmas, the Dr. Seuss version. Yes. Boris Karloff as the narrator. And as the Grinch. And as the Grinch. And the song... You. You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Grinch. Boris Karloff did not sing that. That's throw Ravenscroft, a Disney alumni. Still, it's a great song. You know the eight. He's the man who sings Grim Grinning Ghosts in the Haunted Mansion. Right, right, I don't yeah. know who, who recorded this song, but I heard it on a heavy metal station once. And it was a heavy metal band that remade that song. It was rocked. <laughs> awesome. Very awesome. awesome. And my favorite part of the whole thing is when the Grinch finally turns good and he's got the, and the, the sack of toys and the sleigh is just about to go over and with all his might when, when his heart finally goes and he's just lifting this thing up with two hands and he's got this big old legitimate happy smile not the mean nasty uh, one that he with that devilish the smile the cynical one it's like I'm the Grinch and I'm good so he's know. the Grinch and he's no. da da Dylan did it Dylan finished it. Thank, thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, you good? I have trained my little buddy well. All right. Num Dylan is not Gilligan. Number five. I could totally be the skipper, though. Just I actually saying. was a skipper before. Long story. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mikey. Number five. I'm marking out to my company the Disney Very Merry Christmas Parade. They show it every year. They tape it. They tape it the week before Thanksgiving, though, 
which is like whatever, you know. And they always even with Disney, though, even with Disney, Thanksgiving, you know? it, it, Thanksgiving just and gets what dead. basically not like, a good look, Granddad. Basically, they shoot <laughs> they shoot the, the parade down in Florida, then they shoot yeah. in California. They edit the two together, one big parade. You get to see all the stars come out and and perform their hits. I, yeah, they I, came the next day. You came the next. You missed it by a day. I think so. It was like the next day or so. It was either it was either a day or a week. I think it was the next day. Right. Someone tells me it was the next day. Either way, it's but, off. but it's like the the fa the big stars. I mean, they get to perform. Do they get to play in the park afterwards? I've never. I haven't seen any of the big names perform. Or not the big names perform, but the. I just want to see big stars in the park as normal people. Right. I don't see that many. Once in a while I do, but not all the time. Number four, animated, Charlie Brown Christmas. The warm, happy, fuzzy moment when Linus explains the Christmas story. Very, very sentimental, very happy. And of course they wrap up the tree and the blanket and all that. And, you know, very fun. Very, it's a classic, you know, you can't go wrong with Charlie Brown. But he never gets to kick that football. He never gets to kick the football. Well, I think yeah. Lucy finally does let him, but he misses and kicks her. <laughs> well, wow. If he actually kicks her, then honestly, she deserves it sometimes. Cause oh! Lucy, oh, come on. Lucy is, the, Lucy is the bully. I'm sorry. You can't say that she doesn't. I agree. Lucy is the bully. She oh, And Charlie Brown is the idiot for trying to kick the ball every time. He, he never gets it, you know? We should we should analyze each one of oh, the characters, but since Dylan's in the room, you know we can't. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, Peppermint Patty put two and two together. That's all I'm gonna say. I got a rock. I got a rock. Number well, three. Now I don't know if they do this as well as they did before, but growing up, I used to love watching the Hollywood Christmas Parade oh, on Hollywood Boulevard. There, I don't know if it's still in play anymore, it but, oh, yeah. it is. but it, if, if it is, it's just not the same. No. When my brother was in high school, he actually marched in that parade two years in a row. Nice. Very good. With a marching band. They had, it, was all, it was always on KTLA Channel 5. Not anymore. Not anymore, though. I'm, I'm assuming, I, if I remember, Bob Eubanks was one of the hosts. Yes, he was. Back in the olden days, yes. Back in the good days of Channel 5, before... Didn't Bob Eubanks used to host the... Uh, he still does, term, term, term he still does the Tournament of Roses yeah. Parade. With Stephanie. Yeah, when they brought in Michaela Pereira, or Michaela, whatever her name right. is from Channel 5, mm -mm, I almost boycotted that year on the Tournament of Roses Parade. I still want to camp out overnight for the Tournament of Roses But basically, you know, it's your typical parade. A few, not as many floats, but... You know, people in, in classic cars, you know, they have the microphones like, Hi, Bob! Merry Christmas! You know, and, and all that. And then, of course, the end was always brought with Santa Claus, and he was always brought out by the Long Beach Junior uh, Municipal Band. And they would always play Here Comes Santa Claus. And that's how, when you heard that song coming, you knew Santa Claus was coming, the kids all were happy. And that's not true, because as we saw on December 10th, Jingle Bell Rock is Santa Claus's official entrance theme. That's right. He's bringing... Oh, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, the Hollywood Christmas Parade, like I say, it's lost its luster, but it still holds dear. Number two. Gotta stay with Disney and, of course, go with Mickey's Christmas Carol. I cannot... Yay! Thank you, thank you. I cannot... I, if it's on, I'll sit down, I'll stop everything, you know. And it's pretty much, I think, the only uh, version of, of Christmas Carol where the ghost of Christmas yet to come talks. The best part I like about that movie is sums up the entire 90 minute story in like 45 minutes. Less. <clears throat> Less, 30 minutes. Okay. They go through it quick. They, they, you know, it's like, here's Scrooge, here's Mickey, here's, you know, they go right through it. So, can't go wrong with Mickey's Christmas Carol. Tonight, Ebenezer, you'll be visited by three ghosts, says Goofy. Scrooge. Ouch! And here we go with the number one Christmas special, without a doubt, hands down, number one, I Love Lucy Christmas special. Yay! And I'm even, I liked it even better because it, it did get colorized. But now, mm. now hold on, it, it, it went back and forth. It went colored during the Christmas scenes and black and white during the flashbacks. Mm. Oh, come on. 
basically the story, you know, everyone's getting ready for Christmas. Uh, Fred comes in with the tree. Here we go again talking about Fred again. Well, because in every episode, Fred Burst has been coming up. He comes in well, with at least it's not Miracle on 34th Street this time. Oh, shit. He comes in with the tree. Yeah, everyone's happy, and Lucy says, You know, Fred, it looks like one side of the tree is off. Go ahead and get get a saw. So he starts cutting on one side. Well, now the other side needs to be cut off. Even out the other side, he cuts off another one. They go back and forth, and while they're flashbacking to their favorite moments, Fred keeps working. He keeps working, and he keeps working, and he keeps working. Eventually, the tree is bare. Does he keep working? He keeps working. <laughs> The tree is bare, so now, just so, so now we have to go and get another tree. Fred comes in with another tree. Lucy tries to start the whole thing over again, but it's like, no, the tree is fine. Then all the toys get put out. Little Ricky comes out. He sees all. He sees his drum set and his <laughs> toys and all that. And in the kitchen, I believe everyone's dressed up like Santa Claus. <laughs> and so they all they all come out singing. I think they all come out singing Jingle Bells. And they all come out and they walk around the tree, and while they're singing, they notice that another Santa Claus has m magically appeared. And Lucy turns over to Ricky and pulls his beard. Ricky pulls Lucy's beard. Fred pulls Ethel's beard. Ethel pulls Fred's beard. Lucy turns over to the Santa in the middle. Ah, oh, the it's beard real is fun. real. And then, thanks to the magic of television. Santa disappears, they come together, they look into the camera with odd looks on their faces and say, Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, that's you know? So, yeah. Uh-oh. Renegade Excuse is finished. Excuse me, I have an email from the anonymous Raw GM. He's fired. You have John That storyline is over. Seriously. Whoa! Whoa! The kid! The kid! So there you go. Top 10 Christmas specials. If I've left any out, go ahead and put them in the comment box, all right? There's more to come. Stay tuned to the channel, because who knows who, who, what episode is coming up next. Even I don't know. Might be mine, might be somebody else's. Can I throw out an honorable mention? Go ahead. The Happy Days episode where Howard was so adamant on having a family Christmas, and they finally invite Fonzie because they realized he had nowhere, no place to go for Christmas Aww. Day. Happy Days episode by Double A. <clears throat> there you go. Like I said, stay tuned. More Christmas to come. Sat Boy out.